Well, hello everyone. I got interested in doing some sort of CRT effect uh, with Photoshop, and I've been I've been working on it a little bit. I wanted to wanted to show you my results and kind of so show you the process of what it involves. It's not. I don't think it's perfect, but it's as close as I can get currently. And I was talking with my friend about maybe doing something similar with. A pixel uh, pixel art games, but this this reason really isn't feasible for that because well you'll see in a moment. But let's start with something like a good old Mega Man Three screenshot. I actually edited this a little bit, and there's a little a little bit of a problem here. Let me just because this is driving me crazy, <laughs> and um, I, I'm just gonna you know uh, how does this work? Uh, so that's because they're this, this year and yeah, so I don't know, I don't know what's happening here, but so I just wanted to give it a little, a little boost. Yeah, there we go. And there was a, like a line missing here on the original shot and there was a little bit of a little piece here missing. So I just, I just did what any con concerned citizen would do and just fixed it up. So, but now this, the size of this screenshot is uh, not very uh, large. It is actually 256 pixels uh, times uh, 240 pixels. So it's, it's it's the original size of an NES screen. And what we what we do with this thing? Uh, well, let's let's go crazy. I'm I'm just gonna uh, copy this, close this one, and let's make a new one uh, just to be on the safe side. First off, I'm going to start by increasing the size by 2000% uh, and you can see it starts to get a little bit blurry, but that's okay. We're going to use the uh, nearest neighbor uh, resample mode. So it actually uh, it actually preserves the, uh, the the hard lines of the pixels. These are the hard lines. So now each pixel uh, is not uh, one pixel on the screen, it's actually uh, 20, because we increased the size by 2000%. So, <laughs> this is how you start. So this is all already like, you need you need to resample quite a bit if you wanna get this type of effect in in your game. So that's, I don't know, maybe, maybe that is feasible, but uh, who knows. Uh, another thing is I'm gonna make a, um, let's go here, and I'm gonna convert this to a smart object because it helps me to work with the work with the ob object. Uh, the thing we're gonna do with this is I'm going to blur it a little bit with Gaussian blur, and I found that eight pixels is the magic number that I like. Uh, that's just how it is. And second thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a pattern. And this is a special kind of pattern that I that I made myself. You can see it on the screen here. It is not well. Actually, you can see it if I if I just zoom in. So it's just pixels. It's like it's it's uh, it's just like little little pixels in a pattern like this. And it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty simple. I I found that uh, I need to keep some of the values a little lighter. So these are like a little less black and then there's a couple of lines that are just black and it gives it uh, this nice little pattern look and this is this is the pattern we're going to use but this is too small uh, well we're going to see how how large we need to go but i'm going to set this to a multiply uh, blend mode and what i found is that well let's turn the blur off a little for a little moment here what i found is that if we scale this i'm gonna See now it starts to blur, so this is the effect that I that I actually want. Uh, we can move the pattern around, and what I found is that I like when uh, when each pixel is about it gets about like two lines here. That's what we're going for. It's even more like three hundred. Oh god. Okay, so we're about at three thirty-five, and that seems to be. So we start here, like here's a line. Here's a line. Here's a, it's, it seems to be pretty good. So let's go with that. Yeah, all right. All right, so it's already starting to look better. 
Um, next thing we want to do is I'm going to make a copy of this layer, but not the whole layer. This is this is not some sort of dog and pony show here. I'm going to I'm going to actually go to the channels. I'm going to select the green channel, which uh, you can see the information of the green channel here. I'm going to uh, just control click the green channel, which selects uh, it selects like a mask of it. Let me show you. So I hit Control Shift uh, C to copy the selection, and then I paste it here. Uh, how could I show you this? Because the background is so blurry. Okay, let me just make a solid color here. So this is the information of the green channel. Uh, there's not too much there. The red values are just completely black. There's a little bit of green in in the blue values, and and so forth. And what we're gonna do with this thing is I'm gonna also convert this to a smart object. I'm also gonna Gaussian blur this, but let's let's do a little bit less. I'm gonna I don't wanna I want I don't wanna go crazy with this. I'm just gonna add like four pixels of a blur. And what this does, when we combine it with this thing and this thing, uh see so I get a <laughs> These things, okay. I let me, let's let's not get to that. It's there's a huge problem with that thing. I'm I'm just struggling us. Anyway, what I like about this result is you can't really see the pixels too much. I mean, you can kind of see it a little bit here, but it starts to mask away uh, the amount of like really pixelated content that you see on the screen. And now, honestly, we're kind of done here. This thing should add more brightness to the to the the thing. And I don't know if I want to keep this like at eight, maybe. I mean, it blurs it a little bit, a little, a little bit more. Maybe let's go with that because I, I'm still testing things around. I'm, I'm gonna uh, turn it into a screen blend mode, so it kind of just lightens things up and it kind of uh, brightens up the black values, so you can see it uh, work here. And also, what I'm gonna do is I don't want everything from this layer to be uh, affect the, uh, the layers underneath so i'm just going to turn some of the darker values of the layer you can see that in work here so if, if i just grab this thing and start going here uh, you can kind of see like the brightness gets more uh, focused to certain things but i don't want to do that I, I just want to get a little bit of the darker values out of the layer so that they don't brighten up the darker values uh, underneath. And I don't know if that's better or not. I think it's um, a little bit better. So it's just, it just focuses on brightening the really bright values, like the font and uh, like these little pipe things here. As you can see, if I turn this off, if I turn it on, it's just, it just like boosts the uh, whiteness of the, of the image. And that's it, I'm pretty much done. Uh, what I did with this thing additionally is I do a little bit of a lens correction. So if we copy this image, I'm just gonna make a new one. Uh, and let's make this a background image. I'm going to add a lens correction. And let's go to the custom. This is like, it's completely your to your taste. I'm gonna scale this uh, down already so, so we can see the effect better, but uh, uh, how much you want to do, um, I find that 9 is a super, or minus 9 is like a super, super uh, curved effect. And if you if you want, you might, like here you go, this is like a minus 9. Of course you can go to like, I don't know, if you want to do a crazy minus <laughs> 65, but it, a, a little bit goes a long way with these things. Uh, so let's, uh, it's going to go minus 5. Uh, then you can do like chromatic aberration that kind of does things. Um, um, I think I know what this is going for, but I don't know if this is like too well. You kind of kind of can see it here. So if if we move this a little bit, it like switches the <laughs> switches the um, location of certain colored uh, information in the pixels. So this is like moving the red values around, and this is moving the uh, blue yellow channel around. And that's fine. I'm I'm happy with that. Let's go to uh, fit in view, and then 
There's the vignette, and I like this one, so let's just go crazy with that. So this thing is like, it, it focuses the, uh, the vignette more on the edges of the, of the screen. And this, of course, just uh, increases the amount. We can do a, a bright vignette, which is a... Uh, this, this tool is designed to, to work with photographs, so you can, like, just correct the lens distortion of photos that you've taken with certain cameras, and there are presets for certain models of cameras. So, so of course, there are tools for fixing all types of problems, but we just, we're just actually trying to do the opposite, and we're creating a more distortion with this thing. So this is pretty good. Of course, if you want to give it a little bit of a perspective, you can. It's fine, but uh, I don't. I don't personally. It's uh, well. Let's let's not go crazy. So there you go. And finally, what I'm going to do is I just pick some sort of dark value like this thing here, and I'm going to fill in the sides. And um, oh, uh, one other thing that I did with this one is the blur. So you can see there's a little bit of a blur going on here. And there's a method to the madness. We're gonna go here in the filter, and I typically I use Gaussian blur for everything, but for this one we're gonna go with a radial blur. And this thing is a little bit crazy. So we're gonna select the zoom method, default is spin. I think it always defaults the spin when you open the program. I don't know why it's, it's it seems like it's a really old blur and nobody really uses it. But we're gonna go with uh, 20 is like crazy. The default, I think, is 10, which is also kind of crazy. So let's go with, I don't know, let's go with uh, 4. You click OK, and it starts to like, yeah. Uh, this is this is going by pretty fast because I have 8700K uh, in my in my PC, so it's doing it. It's doing a lot of job, but it's doing a lot of yeah. So. <laughs> I just woke up, so, so you have to, you're gonna have to forgive me. The thing is, it's blurring too much. So it starts from the center and already starts to blur things like this is blurred out. And I don't like that. I don't want it to be like crazy. So we're just gonna, uh, I messed it up. I, I should have just made a new layer for this and then do the light, light lurb. And we're gonna mask this thing and we're gonna take a brush and, uh, uh, this is like a basic brush with just zero hardness and so I'm making a little bit little bit of a mask here So this is the mask So now you can see that it only blurs like the sides the very sides uh, here And it's it's subtle, but I, I like it so that's it and uh, Finally if we want we can just scale it down a little bit like to 25% and I'm gonna set the uh, resample mode well, it doesn't really matter if you want to sharpen it up later. That's that's fine. But I'm I'm just gonna sh uh, I'm so, I'm gonna select the smoother because this shouldn't be too sharp. It's it starts to look ridiculous. Now well, let me just uh, let's uh, what is the what is the correct turn for this thing? I always do this, but I don't know. Merge down. Let's merge these layers down. Down, boy. Let's go to 25% and bicubic smoother. And there we go. This is looking pretty, pretty good. Pretty good to me. Uh, finally, if you find this is too dark, don't go crazy with curves or something. I'm just going to use the exposure because the Photoshop version that I'm using, the newest Photoshop version, I'm, I'm used to working with like Photoshop CS2 that I bought back in 2006. So I don't think did Photoshop CS2 have exposure because I never I don't remember ever using this. So if this is like a new thing that they added from Camera Raw back in, like five years ago or something, uh, I still find this tool to be kind of amazing. And uh, so what I start with is just doing some bit of a yeah, gamma correction. So I try to see like where the where the brightness starts to go, uh, where it starts to settle to a nice spot. So this is just a little bit like uh, 0.09 uh, change. And then let's boost the exposure a little bit to make the, uh, the colors pop a little more. That's what I'm looking to achieve here. And that's it. 
that's the whole that's the whole thing if you want to compare it to this result well i didn't zoom it quite that much out and the border is a little bit um uh it's not as dark as in this one but it's basically the same effect so there you go also we gotta like change the character name there but you can do whatever you want with this thing. Okay, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed.